While Apple tries to bask in the glow of their $3,500 Apple Vision Pro release, they're quickly working behind the scenes to catch up on an important aspect of spatial computing that's set to define the experience of augmented reality in the back half of the 2020s. This seemingly innocent patent diagram that Apple just filed last week has an entire industry scrambling to make sense of their next move. To gain some insight, I'm headed to Santa Barbara, California to try some tech that might already have the edge on Apple in this specific aspect of spatial computing. And amazingly, some people might actually be able to get this tool for free within the next year or two. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a neurotechnology expert. Let's check it out. I'm visiting Cognition, which I found to be quite different than other tech companies. Rather than creating high-tech devices and then trying to find a use for them, they start with a very specific need from their clients and then design their tech around that. Wearing their Cognition One headset really opened my eyes into the nuances of interacting with artificial intelligence through a brain-computer interface and how that is evolving very quickly right now. In this video, we'll take a look at Cognition's capabilities in contrast to the Apple Vision Pro to include predicting what you want to say by sensing context and setting, communicating back to you through artificial intelligence, sensing your brain waves to enhance the communication, and adding utility to implantable brain-computer interface technologies like Neuralink. Over 5.3 million people in the US alone suffer from some form of paralysis. While other BCI systems are looking to restore mobility to these patients, Cognition specializes in communication. Some diseases like ALS progress to the point at which communication is impossible, unfortunately. The Cognition One is designed to restore communication and provide a profound sense of independence to the patients, but also relieve some caregiver stress by limiting confusion about pain, daily needs, or emotional support. The FDA is very interested in this technology because it could limit costly and unnecessary trips to the emergency room when paralytic patients patients have some discomfort, but not necessarily a medical emergency. I can see that working with these individuals is really speeding up the learning curve about what AR BCI devices need in order to integrate seamlessly into daily life on the scale of mass adoption. Andreas will be the first to admit that the advances in AI language models have really put Cognition One on a whole new level in recent months. So what Cognition is really um, developing significant intellectual property and, and applied applications around is how do you build a language model that can run on a device that can be contextually appropriate, right? Situational awareness. They've done a ton of work in the company on speech prediction technology that more than triples the rate of communication. When typing text into the headset with either head movements or brain waves, the headset offers up to you phrases based on previous words, GPS settings, or even the time of day. If you think about it, the words that you will want to say will differ whether you are at home with your spouse or at the doctor's office. This is how spatial awareness of this BCI headset speeds up interaction between human and AI. And the AI in the headset is constantly learning about the user to better assist them from day to day. And then there's also AI that can work in the signal processing, yeah. right? And so thinking about the actual data acquisition coming off of your brain, how we're processing that information, and understanding someone's intention. Like, what is their intention to interact? Do they want to interact with a person? Well, if so, if they're interacting with a person, you'll probably put preference towards your intention is to speak. Yeah. yeah. If you're wanting to interact with a machine or an IoT device, you're more prone to wanting to interact through sending data as a control signal. So this ability to start to understand inferences around what someone's intending to do and how they want to interact with the world is stuff that Cognition is working on. Linking this headset across multiple platforms is where it starts to get a little spooky. I could silently ask the headset a question, have that integrated into ChatGPT with an intelligent response, and then have that spoken back to me through the headset using Amazon Alexa. Everything Alexa you can do, you can do inside of the headset wirelessly from anywhere. Yeah. Um, and so in that regard, you have a disembodied AI as a companion that can mm -hmm. set timers for you, control lights, things like this. It was a very unique experience to interact with AI without using my hands or even my voice and have that all computed from a device that I was wearing on my head. 
This is definitely the future. The Cognition One has brainwave sensors that you can use. This aids in communicating with flashing visual cues on the AR visor that the headset can detect through your brainwaves alone. Whichever flashing visual cue that you focus on activates that prompt in the user interface. And the idea is really to kind of feel yourself focus, like uh, attending to that stimuli while trying to ignore the other ones, sort of consciously. Yes. <laughs> I've seen something similar, which was NextMind, which was actually bought by Snapchat last year. But with this testing in Santa Barbara, I did know that it was significantly quicker and more responsive than what I experienced with NextMind. And Andreas told me this would actually be the lowest level of performance for me starting out because they have AI systems built in that get better with time as you use it more. The brainwave sensing aspect of Cognition One was designed for those that are completely paralyzed to the point at which eye tracking doesn't work very well anymore. But certainly this technology will enhance consumer wearable BCIs in AR VR experiences in the near future. Now, I know that Apple Vision Pro has this eye tracking software and gesture control that's really awesome per a lot of the influencer reports on YouTube. A lot of us don't know because the headset hasn't been released to the public. So this next year will be the time where eye tracking and gesture control will take over the AR VR space. But mark my words, there will be a day soon where we're going to want our brains to influence what is being presented in front of us in AR VR experiences as well. Obviously the cognition does not have all the features that the Vision Pro has right now, but they're missing that one key element. And it would appear that Apple is trying to catch up in that space with this ear pod patent that senses brainwaves and other biometrics in the ear canal. Now, obviously filing a patent isn't a guarantee that they'll build it, but with LG, Samsung, and other competitors investing in developing BCI products, they obviously don't want to be left behind. And I would love to see Cognition partner up with other implantable BCI companies as well. There's really no reason that you couldn't use Cognition One alongside an implantable BCI to augment communication capabilities even further for disabled persons. Cognition actually just achieved FDA breakthrough status in May 2023, which puts them on the fast track towards FDA approval. Once the device is FDA approved, it's likely that anybody with a stroke, mobility, or communication issues could get this headset for free through their health insurance plan. It was really inspiring to see how much Cognition cares for their clients and the real world impact they're having with them. They had all these pictures of their clients on the wall and would talk about stories of them using the technology. But for me, it was fascinating just to have a computer that I wore on my head, read my brain waves, predict what I wanted to say next, and start learning from my brain in a feedback loop. Tell me a joke. You can see it's going to Alexa. What made Van Gogh such a good oh. friend? He was willing to lend an ear. It's such a weird way to interact with a computer. Yeah. You know, it's so intimate compared to yeah. being on a laptop. Mm -hmm. Here I am kind of typing with my head movements and at some point it's going to be our neural signals. Correct. Yes. And then the AI talks back to you. It yeah. feels a lot more intimate than just sitting on your laptop, even working with chat GPT well, or something. And the thing too is that if I'm sitting here and I'm, if you select that, then the keyboard goes away. Right, and then mm -hmm. it's just blank, and mm -hmm. so now you, now we can just look at each other longingly if we want to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just came away from the experience understanding better what mainstream brain-computer interface wearables are going to feel like very soon.